Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Cauchy Functional Equation. The Cauchy Functional Equation There are actually quite a few that go by this name, but we're going to talk about the, one of the more elementary ones. The Cauchy Functional Equation states the following. It states that, suppose that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for every x and y in R, for all x and y in R. So we have this functional relationship for any points x and y in the real line. Okay, what I want to do is I want to actually study this functional equation to see if it, that, what kind of properties it gives us the function f. So the first thing it automatically gives us, it gives us two things for free. The first thing it gives us is that f, if I plug in zero for both x and y, I get the relationship that f of zero on the left hand side is equal to twice f of zero, which forces f of zero to be zero, right? Because two f of zero is equal to zero. The only way that's possible is if f of zero is zero. So f of zero has to be zero by the zero prog principle, if you like. f of zero is equal to zero. That's one beautiful thing we get. So it goes to the origin. And we also know that if I look at this, if I look at f of x minus x, well, that's zero. And that's going to be what? That's going to be f of x plus f of negative x by our functional equation. And I know that the, the left-hand side is zero, so that tells me that f of negative x is negative f of x. In other words, the function is what? The function is odd. So f is odd. f is an odd function. Okay, great. So f of zero is zero, and f is an odd function. The next thing I'd like to observe is that for any any n in n, we can look at f of n, which is f of 1 plus 1 n times. So there's n ones over here. So I can iteratively, or by induction, I can prove this by induction, show there's going to be n copies of f of 1. Okay, So we can prove this by induction easily. It's an easy induction proof. By induction, this is trivial to prove. Okay? So it's n times f of 1. Now I'm going to consider any rational number. So let p over q q not equal to zero, be a point in q. Okay, so I'll give you a point in q. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to consider two representations. The first representation I'm going to consider is I'm going to consider f of q times p over q. Okay, well on one hand, the q's will cancel, and this is just f of p. So this is just going to be p times um, f of 1. So this would be p times f of 1 by a result over here, because p is an integer. Okay. On the other hand, what can I do? On the other hand, I know that I can write what? I know that um, q itself is an integer, right? And so I can write this as how many copies of q times r. So I can write this as q, topi q copies of this number over here, p times q. So I can iterate this and say this is also equal to by my iteration formula. So also f of q times this p over q is just q copies, q versions, q numbers of f of p over q. So in other words, f of p over q is what? So f of p over q, this is equal to this, so it's going to be what? Is equal to p over q times f of 1. That's a very important formula, because now, what can I say? Therefore, I can say that f of r is equal to r times f of 1 for all r in q, OK? And so now, um, if the function, so now if we can assume the function is continuous, right? So just as a remark, as a note, okay, so note, if, um, if xn converges to x, then that implies that xn minus x converges to 0. And so if this function f is continuous at x equals 0, then this relationship over here implies what? Then f of xn minus x is f of xn minus f of x by our functional relationship over here, right? And so this, of course, is converging to 0. So this converges over here to f of 0, which is 0, as n goes to infinity. And therefore, that implies that f of xn, this implies that f of xn converges to f of x for any value x, right? So in other words, if f is continuous at 0, then f is continuous at x. f is continuous 
on the whole real line, okay? And so now that's great because if f is continuous at zero, so if we assume that f is continuous at zero, so let's make this assumption now. Let's assume f is continuous at zero. That means it's continuous everywhere, and I can use this relationship over here, so I can let x be any real number, and I can find a sequence of rational numbers qn, which converges to x, qn, and q, because the rationals are dense, right? This is because that the closure of the rationals are just the whole real line, okay? And then what will this tell me? I know that f of qn is equal to qn f of 1, and so as n goes to infinity, this is going to go to f of x is x times f of 1. So in other words, the only functions that set, the only continuous functions that satisfy this equation over here, this Cauchy functional relationship for continuous functions, are just the functions f of x is just some number lambda times x, where that number lambda is f of 1. Thank you very much.